Assemblywoman Ellen Jaffe is such an asset to our community. And uh, we're very fortunate to have her in office advocating for us over and over and over again. And she doesn't disappoint. She always does what needs to be done. When you talk about servant leadership, she's the model. And uh, so we're grateful that you could be here with us at Good Samaritan Hospital today for this very important announcement. And uh, I would like to ask Assemblywoman Ellen Jaffe to come forward and share with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah, uh, uh, who is the Vice President of Public Relations in, in Good Sam. And um, I, I want to thank you for your courtesy and for giving us the opportunity to share this information uh, this morning. Um, I'm so proud to be here and to actually suggest that the fight against breast cancer in New York took a giant step forward this year. When Governor Cuomo signed into law legislation, which I sponsored with Senator Flanagan, the Breast Density Inform Law. Chapter 265, it was signed. Uh, roughly 40% of the women who have mammograms have dense breast tissue. And because dense breast tissue appears white on the mammogram and cancer also appears white, it can be difficult to see the cancer. A January 2011 study by the Mayo Clinic found that in women with dense breast tissue, 75% of cancer is missed by the mammography alone. This breast density uh, legislation will improve breast cancer detection and prevention by requiring mammography services to inform patients if dense breast tissue is found during the exam. Currently, there are no requirements in law for patients to be alerted to breast density, one of the leading risk factors of breast cancer in women. Now women with dense breast tissue, which can mask tumors, make, making, making early detection more difficult, will get the information they need to determine, along with their physicians, whether further screening is recommended. The new law requires mammography providers, radiologists, to include the following notification in the report to provide it to patients who are found to have dense tissue. Your mammogram shows that your breast tissue is dense. Dense breast tissue is very common and is not abnormal. However, dense breast tissue can make it harder to find cancer on a mammogram and may also be associated with increased risk of breast cancer. This information about the result of your mammogram is given to you to raise your awareness. Use this information to talk to your doctor about your own risks for breast cancer. At that time, ask your doctor if more screening tests might be useful based on your risk. A report of your results was sent to your physician. This will raise awareness, educate women with dense breast tissue about the importance of following up with their physician. I want to applaud Joanne Pushkin, a breast cancer survivor whose later stage cancerous tumor was hidden by detection, to hidden from detection by dense breast tissue, and so many courageous advocates who worked so tirelessly to ensure this life-saving legislation was passed. Simply put, this legislation is about saving lives. Supplied with information about their own breast density, women will now be empowered to discuss additional screening options with their physicians. With the approval of this new law, women will have better health care information to pursue other screening options to find cancers early when they are most treatable and survivable. And now it is my true honor to introduce a woman of real distinction. Joanne's advocacy and willingness to never give up is truly inspiring. She spoke to every assembly member and senator, I think, without exception, to assure that this legislation would pass. As I noted, she is a survivor who made a decision to use her personal situation to help others fight back against this deadly disease. After her diagnosis in 2005, which was originally missed because she was one of the millions of women with dense breast tissue, Ms. Pushkin dedicated herself to advocating for advanced screening coverage and the disclosure of enhanced information to all women. Joanne Pushkin is co-founder of DENSE, Density Education National Survivors Effort, a national grassroots effort to raise awareness about breast density. 
and its inherent cancer risk, and is also founder of the New York chapter of Dents New York. She serves as the Director of Governmental Relations for IU Dents Advocacy, an organization that supports efforts for federal law that would provide all women in the nation who are affected by breast density with the opportunity for an early stage diagnosis. This is a woman who is truly inspiring, who is not just making, made this happen in New York, but now it's expanding all over the nation and the world. I will allow, give uh, Joanne the opportunity to share that information, but I am truly proud and honored to introduce to you Joanne Pushkin. My name is Joanne Pushkin, and I am a time bomb. Seven years ago, I learned two things. I learned I had breast cancer, and I learned I had dense tissue. Tragically, I learned them both the same day. My nightmare began with a self-exam. I was the model patient doing everything I was told was right, exercising, eating healthy, and of course, never missing an annual mammogram exam. Yet one day, I felt a lump. Though large enough to feel, the lump did not show up on a mammogram that day. Why? Oh, said the mammo tech, you have dense breasts. That's going to be a very hard find for us. I remember saying to her, wait, what? What I had never been told, what I did not know, what I had been kept in the dark about, was that dense breast tissue shows up white on a mammogram. Unfortunately, so does cancer. Trying to find cancer on a mammogram of a dense breast is like trying to find a snowball in a blizzard, and here's why. When a woman has a mammogram, her density is rated during that exam into one of four categories. On the left is a fatty breast, and then density increases all the way up on the right-hand side, and you can see as density increases, the breast becomes more and more of a whiteout situation. This is a mammographic images of a fatty breast. On the left is a normal, healthy breast, and on the right is a tumor in a fatty breast, which is clearly visible. On the left is, an ex is a mammogram of an extremely dense breast. This is what I had. And on the right is, is that an MRI of that very same breast with the tumor clearly visible. If this woman had not been sent on for an MRI, that cancer would not have been detected. Based on the size, it was estimated my tumor had been growing in my body for about five years missed every single one of them by mammography, hidden behind dense tissue. And worse, while my cancer was growing undetected those five years, the letters I received after my mammograms every one of those years simply said, normal, negative, no evidence of cancer. Six words. On the left is my actual letter. We wish to report the following on your mammography examination, normal, negative, no evidence of cancer. We call it the happy gram for obvious reasons. What, 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 my, what did my letter not tell me? It, it didn't tell me I had dense breasts. It, there was not one word that density could drastically compromise a mammogram, and not one word suggesting another screening tool that might have detected my cancer at an earlier stage, sparing me the horror of seven surgeries, eight rounds of chemo, 30 rounds of radiation, a recurrence, and now the rest of my life lived as a time bomb. The reality is that 40% of all women of mammography age have dense breast tissue. Incredibly, a national survey found that 95% of them do not know it. Women are often shocked to learn that for women with the densest breasts, mammograms will find less than 50, 50% of cancers growing in dense tissue. The odds of a toin course exceed the odds that cancer will be found. And if, if hiding cancers on a mammogram isn't scary enough, breast density has other associated risks. How many people here knew that women with the densest breasts are four to six times more likely to get breast cancer? Not one. How many people here knew that 71% of all breast cancers occur in women with dense breasts? Not one. How many people here knew that according to the American Cancer Society, breast density is a greater risk for the development of breast cancer than having not one, but two first-degree relatives who have had the disease. It's astounding, you can't even believe it. How many people here feel that this is information a woman should know? The LA Times has said that density just might be the greatest cancer risk you've never heard of. 
When I finally reviewed all my annual radiological reports, I was shocked to learn that dense breast tissue was a term I should have been very familiar with. It was mentioned every single year in the report sent from radiologist to my referring doctor. My radiologist knew I had dense breasts. My referring doctor knew I had dense breasts. The only one who didn't know was the one with dense breasts. When I asked why I had not been informed about my own breast density, I was told it was not the standard of care. I am living the tragedy of a late stage cancer diagnosis because no one had to tell me I had dense breasts. The fatal flaw is that no requirement exists for a patient to be informed about her own breast density. Can I participate in my own health care if I don't know this? No. Can I protect myself if no one tells me I'm at risk? No. Can I advocate my, for myself if I'm kept in the dark? No. Withholding this information from me effectively denied me the, the opportunity for an early stage diagnosis. Breast density reporting to women should not be optional. We needed a law. Assemblywoman Jaffe heard my story and took up the charge in the assembly. She asked for facts, she asked for research, and she asked for experts to talk to, and soon began work on New York's breast density inform bill. From the very moment she committed to draft the bill, Assemblywoman Jaffe threw the full resources of her office and political capital at it. She understood that this legislation was about saving lives, and that would be accomplished by supplying women with pertinent information about their own bodies. Senator Flanagan led the Senate effort. The bill initially effaced much opposition from various medical associations. I will tell you that the Jaffe Flanagan powerhouse team from both sides of the aisle never wavered in their commitment to get density information to New York women. Without the support of Assemblywoman Jaffe and her incredible staff, this story would have a very different ending. To support the legislation, I formed Dense New York and became a founding participant of RU Dense Advocacy, which is a national grassroots effort to get breast density informed bill drafts across the country. I mentor women all across the United States who are working on bill introductions in their own states. We now have 13 <clears throat> state bills introduced this year, and we have active advocates in over half the United States. This 24-7 effort was all-consuming and left little time for my own business, and since January 2012, it is what I devote full-time energy to. And I do it because the research tells us the implications are enormous. Research indicates that right now in New York, every year, at least 2,500 2,500 New York State women a year with dense breasts leave their mammograms being told, as I was, all is normal negative, but who actually have invasive breast cancer that would be found if they were sent for screening ultrasounds. That's a 9-11 every year of missed invasive cancers. While mammograms remain the best first step in screening for all women, for women with dense breasts, it should not be the last. After the New York bill introduction, I turned my attention to Washington, D.C., and began the push on the federal level. In 2010, both a federal bill and FDA consideration of a federal regulatory change were initiated at my request. No matter which state a woman lives in, no information about her should be kept from her. I am I am delighted to tell you that mandatory breast density in form became law in New York this past July. Due to the tireless work of Ellen Jaffe, the bill received the unanimous support of every member of both the New York State Senate and Assembly. Beginning in January, the letter New York women receive after their mammograms will contain information about their own breast density and its associated risks. New York is one of only five states with a breast density and form law, and even better, New York's language is the most comprehensive in the nation and serves as template to other states around the country when they draft their bills. Thank you. If I could ask Ellen Jaffe to come up. I, I have to tell you that this bill was heavy lifting. When I tell you there was opposition, I mean there was opposition. There were a total of five assembly drafts to get this bill over the finish line and three Senate drafts. And so 
Ellen Jaffe, on behalf of, I'm, well, now I'm going to cry, uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors of RU Dense Advocacy, RU Dense Advocacy, Inc., and the dense network of grassroots advocates across the nation, we would like to honor you with this Exposing the Secret Champion Award for your tireless work in getting this bill over the finish line. And you, you can see it's a beautiful statue of a woman holding up a globe, and that is because the New York bill serves as template for other states uh, around the nation. And in fact, New Jersey's bill, which is exactly New York's language, has passed its Senate unanimously and is working its way through its assembly. Canada drafted a bill, Guam drafted a bill, um, and we just found out last week, we got a call from the European Breast Cancer Coalition, which is an organization um, representing advocates in 46 European countries that they're working and considering legislation as well. And we tell everyone the same thing, use New York's language. And that's Alan Jaffe's. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. So much. I am, I am so proud and, and overwhelmed. Um, you know, when you, when you take the leap into public service, you, you don't know what's ahead of you very often. Uh, the goal is to serve the public and serve the community and, and do what's what in your heart are the right things to do. Well, you know, when I met Joanne, I knew the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. and an extraordinary advocate who truly did go to speak to almost every single assembly member and senator who had reservations in their concerns. But I'm so very proud, together, Joanne, you and all the, and the advocates, but with your lead, and Senator Flanagan, and Governor Cuomo, who signed it into law, we are actually going to save lives and change so much in New York State and throughout the country the and the world, which is very overwhelming hearing that today. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm so truly honored. Um, I thank you. I, I thank my staff, uh, Teresa, who worked so hard on this. And, and of course, this program and council, they're not here today, but Bob and Christina, I have to acknowledge in the assembly who wrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it so that we could make it the perfect law that would really respond to the needs and, and, and unanimous support. And of course, Darcy, and thank you, Darcy Castellero, my chief of staff who helped lead this. And I want to thank Michelle for, for helping putting this together today, our press today. But thank you all for being here. And thank, thank you. you so much, Joanne. And, and of course, your husband, <laughs> who's been so, right, who is an enormous su supporter and always, always stands with Joanne throughout our meetings and uh, every time she visited Albany. Thank you all so very much. Thank, Thank you. you.